just sniff the air. It's absolutely terrible. Cruise ships are incredibly polluting. They're allowed to burn the dirtiest fuel. We have ambitious plans to be good stewards of the, of the environment. So this is from Ocean Terminal, one of the major cruise ports in Southampton. With 500 ship calls and 2 million passengers a year, Southampton is one of Europe's busiest cruise terminals. But the £1 billion the industry brings to the area each year could come at a price. Southampton's a very busy cruise port and we know that the emissions from the cruise ships there are much more than the, than the, the emissions of, of sulphur from, from the city's cars. You know, there's 44 cruise ships calling there and that's, that's the same pollution level as, uh, as a quarter of a million cars. Dr Lucy Gilliam is a shipping expert from an EU-wide organisation that wants to make travel greener. That's why we're walking by the Thames. She says the problem with cruise ships is essentially how most are powered. The majority of cruise ships are burning heavy fuel oil. And heavy fuel oil is this thick, viscous fuel that's kind of the bottom of the barrel that's much more dirty than we're allowed to burn on our roads. But surely when these behemoths are in dock, they power down and switch off their engines, right? Uh, no. They are floating hotels, they've got all these like leisure facilities, all the lights, all of the water processing plants on board, like huge energy demands. The second reason why they're continuing to use their engines in ports is because actually marine fuel isn't taxed, so there's a financial incentive to keep burning that dirty fuel. All commercial vessels using UK ports must switch to a different kind of diesel engine or use seawater to wash their emissions, a process called scrubbing. But either way, engines are running 24-7. It's windy up here. That's a prevailing wind, which means it's usually blowing in this direction, across the ports, taking any pollution over there. The air pollution average levels on this road consistently average above the World Health Organization's significant risk to, uh, to health standards. Christelle is a GP here in the Woolston area of the city and, full disclosure, she's a climate activist too, frequently lobbying to make Southampton Port cleaner. She's worried just breathing this air can contribute to serious heart and lung problems. There's no doubt in my mind that air pollution, of which the cruise ships is a part, is causing problems for my patients. Our surgery is listed on the British Lung Foundation map as one of the pollution hotspots, so our patients, in order to come to their appointments, have to breathe in air, which is higher than the WHO uh, significant risk standard. But can we ever know just how much harmful pollution in Southampton is coming from cruise ships? Data modelling over the years suggests the ports are responsible for anything between 2 and 34% of air pollutants. But these scientists have actually gone dockside. To take a look at one emission we don't hear about very often, particulate matter. Basically tiny bits of dust, soot and smoke. My entire PhD is about characterising air pollution, specifically in Southampton. The crews and the cargo ships, if they're both burning heavy fuel oil, then we'll see this. Uh, but yeah, we can fingerprint where it has come from a ship, where it has come from a car, and then how much has come from each. Those emission fingerprints can then be correlated with cruise ship movements to see just how much pollution the idling ships could be responsible for. All these samples here are current ocean terminal, and this is the ultrafine material, which is what we believe gets very, very deep in your body, can pass into the bloodstream and has potentially the worst health effects. Are you worried about what you're breathing in? Uh, I mean, I've lived in Southampton for six years, so it's a bit late. Turns out these tiny grubby specks might be a big deal. There is evidence that the scrubbers are not necessarily especially effective for the very smallest particles, we call them ultrafines. There's very little known about them because they're hard to collect. Uh, and they've both been associated with effects on the lungs and the airways and also the heart and the, the circulatory system, which gives us cause for, for some concern about what they might do when 
people inhale them. So this is what we're trying to work out. Do you come up here and have, like, the, uh, the office parties? <laughs> you know, we will now. There's no denying the fortunes of Southampton are bound up with the cruise industry. The UK industry brought about 10 billion euros of benefit last year, so that's a huge input into Britain uh, PLC. So there's a huge economic benefit to, to cruise industry being active in ports and destinations, and that's both from an economic perspective but also culturally. I don't think it's acceptable for the cruise ship industry to say we don't have enough money to solve this problem. We know that they are the most profitable uh, shipping sector. They, they do make um, substantial amounts of profits. But all that money actually benefits the whole shipping industry. Cruise companies contribute to a £5 billion fund for research into new greener fuels. And where they lead, others follow. We are about 1% of the total size of the shipping industry globally, so we're really a small part of that industry. But actually what we've become is we've become leaders in the technology and alternative fuels that will allow the entire shipping industry to reduce its impact and reduce its footprint. But surely one solution is, well, just to plug these ships in when they dock. That's called ship-to-shore power. The Germans have it in Hamburg. So why can't we have it here? And there's this kind of chicken and egg problem where the ports say the ships don't have the plugs and then the ships say the ports don't have the facilities. And basically what we end up is like in, in a deadlock. Associated British Ports, which manages Southampton docks, says it's making good progress with ship-to-shore power and is indeed aiming to have the UK's first installation this year. But as yet, there's no word on where the estimated £6 million cost is coming from. The tide is turning. Ten new ships, powered by liquefied natural gas, are on order for UK waters, all due by 2026. That includes P&O's new flagship, the Iona, launching in Southampton this year. But it will take a while to clear the air in this city. The people that are benefiting from cruise liners mostly don't live in this area and therefore we are paying the price in terms of health for those emissions.